Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is the Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the Decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Draft Day Sports College Basketball, and it's episode number 59. I've been at this one for a good, good while now. Uh, we've got three recruits. We have one left. We actually don't even have a scholarship offer out at the moment. Uh, two recruits coming in are two of the top power forwards in the nation. Uh, one of them will clearly be playing out of position, either as a center or small forward in the future. And then we also have Mark Jones, who's not ranked terribly high, but is, uh, according to my scouting, a pretty decent shooting guard. What I am really, really missing, though, uh, as you can see from the list of recruits, point guards. So looking just at that list, there are seven that I'm currently after. And if you watched the last episode, you would see kind of how we've gone through that process uh, to try to get after these seven individuals. I'm starting to gather some data on them. Now let's go ahead and watch film on each of them again this time. And we'll go ahead and make our calls. We've already got everything here on Jarvis. Adam West, we are actually moving up his list, number nine now. So that leads to the possibility that he could be interested in us. Arden, almost there. There we go. Oh, did we have parent? Yes, we did. Okay. Orly. Still missing most. Okay, location is huge, but West Virginia, <laughs> not so good for us. Academics, a little bit. Facilities, a little bit. Uh, he would be a, a pretty difficult recruit for us. And just a, oh, this is the junior college sophomore. Okay. Parents have a fair amount of influence, and location is huge for them as well. Uh, so this this would be a terribly hard recruit uh, to get. And he was the only one who was a C and an F in rebounding. So I'm going to go ahead and remove him from the list. Uh, we run out of time with just one thing left. Okay, we'll uh, resume that task in a week. For now, let's get back to games, or get to games for this episode. Uh, next up, we play Hawaii, who are just 1-10 and 10 on the season. Uh, and at home, so this is going to be the most surefire game we've had in a long, long time. Uh, so we're going to actually just sim this first game. My RPI right now is 38th with this nice 92 record, 587. And there we go, 10 and 2 with the win. Uh, opening round of the conference schedule, 74-59 the score. That's not actually as comfortable as I would have expected. Uh, it looks like Sean Swift had himself a really, really bad day, or at least there was a a poor stretch that he was on the court for, uh, where Hawaii was able to make a pretty decent run. Uh, but meanwhile, Moore had 16 points, Waltman had 15, um, Monroe just 10. Didn't shoot the ball terribly well. Team as a whole, but once again, our opponents struggled with just 30% themselves. Uh, so that's been our real strong suit this year, is our defense. Okay, next up we are on the road at Montana who are just three and nine. And 
Road games are never a guarantee. Never. But that one looks like we'll have a chance. I'm going to go ahead and skip this one as well. I certainly hope that we can come away with the win here. <clears throat> Had a team with just a few wins on the season. <laughs> we don't. Road games are road games. We dropped that game. I hope it was at least close. Yeah, extremely close. We lost by a single point. But we still lost, and that's that's pretty sad against against a team like this. It looks like they got it done in the first half. Points in the paint. Ouch. 44 to 20. They led by 14. We, we fought back and still lost. Power forward Salvi had 27 on 12 of 17 shooting. There's your difference maker right there. He had a third of their points. Milton had a decent day. Fitz struggled, just four points. Moore had just two points, one of eight shooting. They shot 63% from the field. Most of that was on two guys. That's going to make that RPI plummet. Next up is the game that we will be watching here to start the episode off. Uh, Valparaiso, 11-2. and two. Uh, They were ranked most of last season. I think they got as high as top 16 or 17. And they're off to a similar strong start to this season with that 11-2 and two record. Uh, but being at home should be a good tight contest. And I think we would be... You have new mail. Just about favorites. All right, for now, stick to the point guards. List is down to six now. New evaluations, a couple of them have dropped to C's. Watch film again on all of them. And let's see. Braswell was the only one we didn't have everything. Okay, here's another one who cares a lot about location. No parent influence. I don't know what they care about, but it's down to just him. So playing time and location are huge. I've got kind of an equal playing time-ish style, so it won't hurt him too much, but it's certainly not going to help him. This is another one of those recruits that I don't like our chances, but he is a B. His defense is really good. So I don't want to rule him out at this point. Academics, that's somebody we could go after. It's another one of those location first. But also a really good defender. So I don't want to let him go just yet. Okay, Charles, academics, facilities, and location. I can work that, but he's only a C. West, the one we're moving up his list. Facilities we could get after. I'm guessing we're moving up because he doesn't have other teams coming after him. Uh, but defense is only a D. Overall is only a C, meaning he's probably ranked a lot higher than he actually is. And this is a junior college transfer. 2.7 GPA is comfortable. That's that's fine.
And then finally Jarvis, another pretty good defender. Again, location. A lot of these guys care about the location. Uh, but facilities, academics. Still not ready to offer someone. Uh, it's hard to tell the difference. I'd say right now, Stoudemire would probably be my favorite. <clears throat> really good defender. No Ds. Braswell would certainly be the second favorite. Again, defense. And then Jarvis. All right, well, let's get to that Valparaiso game. This could be an early decider. Oh, look how much my RPI dropped. What, 42 spots or something like that? Any loss is always going to hurt, but... Losing to a 3-9 and nine team hurts a bit more. Right. Start off with the early scoring and a 5 nothing lead, then 8-2 after the first uh, well, four minutes. Now the game starts to open up a bit, 15-10. Rebounds, early lead goes to us, turnovers, plus two, shooting 60%. Four of seven beyond the arc here early in this game. Uh, one thing keeping them in it is seven of nine from the free throw line as we're tied at 29 with seven to play. Rebounds are level, that's also helping. Both teams shooting the ball really well, now they're shooting better than us. Moore's already got 15 points here inside the first half. He's definitely been the difference maker here. Uh, the 48-37 halftime score as we pull out a decent lead. Uh, turnovers are plus 9. And that seems to be the difference because both teams are shooting somewhere between 45 and 50%. Uh, both teams get into the free throw line, same amount, having them roughly the same makes. Uh, we've tripled their attempts on three-pointers and doubled the makes, but we similar percentages. We're, we're pulling away 20-point lead now, 69-49 there for a moment. Uh, the turnovers are the biggest difference by far. We have 12 steals in this game, and with five to play, it's 77-60. They closed the gap a bit, but. Uh, part of that's slowing down Moore, who's 8 of 16 with 19 points, just 4 points here in the second half. Uh, Steele's got 15 of his own, though, and it's 80, 64, 2 minutes to play, no timeouts or anything. We'll just let this one uh, run its course. 86, 73, final. Rebounds pretty much level. It's the turnovers. That, that was the difference in this game. They actually shot a little better than we did uh, everywhere. Everywhere, all shooting statistics uh, lean their way by a small margin, uh, but the turnovers was heavily in our favor. So defense, defense, very key. That'll bring that uh, RPI up. Quite a bit. Next game is another home game. Alabama, Birmingham, they're just 4-10. Uh, being that it's at home, we'll definitely be favored to win. This would be 12 wins in just 15 games played. Certainly would be a strong start to the season and three and one in conference. Uh, DC's up next. They are five and eleven, but it is a road game. Oh, 
are we as a road team right now? We're perfect 9-0 and at home, just 3-3 three and three on the road. So uh, that's including those non-conference games. So we definitely have work to do on the road. We'll play a lot more games at home at this point. Valparaiso is another team perfect at home. Boise State, really strong start. Four straight wins in conference. Monroe's on 14 points per game. Uh, Moore's got five assists per game, and then it's all fits uh, in the defensive and in loose ball categories. Our offensive statistics have moved up a lot. Uh, everything inside the top 100 now, but then defensively we're still number 16 in the nation. So right now we're, we're averaging 12.2 points per game better than our opponents. It's a good sign for things to come. But we're going to have to win a few more road games than we have been able to do so far. Uh, still just evaluation. I've had a look at everyone now, so I think it's about time that I make a decision on offering a scholarship to one of these guys and see if we can't get a boost out of it. I know West is one where we might be able to make up some ground. Uh, as he's got some interest already, number nine on his list. I don't think we've climbed onto anyone else's yet, no. Uh, but the guy that I see again changes, uh, no, maybe not. I mean, passing and handling are huge for a point guard, and then defense. And looking at that combination, B-A-B, -B, well, scoring. There's one really good scorer right there in Charles. Uh, but good defense and a B. He's going to hit most of his free throws. He can shoot outside, shoot somewhat inside. Hmm. 3.2 GPA. He is the highest ranked. He's inside the top 100. Maybe we try Jarvis. Jarvis cares a lot about location, conference prestige, though. That's going to make him a hard grab. But with academics and facilities up there, a bit. Let's give him a shot and see... Uh, if we get any traction. And we'll just sim this whole week here. Quick succession. Yeah, RPI jumped back up to uh, 54th after getting that win over Valparaiso and winning both games in the week, really. Okay, we got the win there on the road. Next up, Baltimore at home, 11-5. and five. That's another uh, difficult matchup. Chance to go down. Uh, you know, lo looking at the last couple of years and where we've been as a team and where I'm at right now, uh, I would predict just one loss at home on the season. Uh, Baltimore is certainly a team that could make that happen. I like our odds better than 50%, but not much better. It is enough, though. We get the win 14-3 and now, 5-1 and one in the conference. Uh, Western Carolina, who is 8-9, and nine, will be the next road game. Uh, that'll be early next week. You have new you have new mail. Okay, Toledo and Muncie both coming up and they're pretty low in the standings. Uh, within the conference, Loudonville Loudonville way out of it, 0-6. Toledo, Hawaii, 
Alabama, Birmingham, these guys are already out of contention. Washington, D.C. struggling at 2-4. and four. Uh, Then it gets a little bit tighter. But at 5-1, and one, Boise State, Valparaiso, and us. So Valparaiso's only loss uh, was when we played them. Their RPI is a little bit higher than mine at 36, as we've now risen up to 45th. Uh, Western Carolina, Western Carolina, inside the top 100 at 98, 4 and 2 in conference. And then we're going on the road. Uh, so this is actually one of the bigger games left on the calendar already with uh, all this time we've got left. Oh, dang. We end the season with another game uh, playing against Valparaiso at Valparaiso. Uh, I like the chances of winning these two road games. Uh, Toledo as well. But we've got the next two games this coming week. Uh, if we can split these two games, I like our chances here in conference because after that, it's all winnable till that final game. Uh, and by then we might be clear. If we lose both of these games, and then we're in danger of losing that one, and could lose another game along the way, well, we might not get that automatic promotion. So a split here would uh, really help our chances. By the way, Moore is leading the league, leading the conference here uh, with five assists per game. No immediate impact from uh, Jarvis. We'll keep an eye on that over the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to take this week one day at a time, though, to keep things moving along. We're not going to witness any of these games. <clears throat> this one might be a little bit more winnable than the next game, so hope. Hopefully we can and we don't. <laughs> Boise State, it's going to be a bit tougher. So losing that one by a close margin, it's nice that it was a close margin, but that doesn't help anything in the win-loss record. Again, it's the halftime deficit that does us in. Points in the paint also behind. Yet again, fast break points, 12-2. to two. Monroe had 18. Hearns added 11. Decent day for him, though he was a minus 9. Thirty-seven percent from the field. We held them, but they really held us. Not saying these two games are must-wins, or that we must win one. It would just be extremely helpful to our season. If it did, it would take a lot of pressure off. Uh, so losing that first one, I think that puts a little more pressure onto this second game. With 10-8 and eight, Boise State. I'm not liking my chances right now. I'd say we're under 50% on winning this. Slightly under. And we do. We drop it. 5-3. and three, So two straight losses. And this... For the first time is pretty bad. We lose by 13. Uh, Monroe just five points. Uh, fits with the double double. Got 11 boards, but he was still a minus five on the day. Again, halftime deficit down 10. Well, that certainly hurt losing both of those games on the road. I would say that we've got about a 50-50 shot of winning every game the rest of the way. 
leading up to the final game of the season, the Valparaiso game. So with that, I think we could win a lot of games. I think every game up until that game is going to be better than 50% odds that we win it, even the road games. And we might need it because look how far down the standings we are right now. Uh, but realistically, look at that. 6-2, six 6-2, and 6-2 six and two, six and two at the top. Uh, Valparaiso, we're going to get that rematch with them. That could be important in that final game. But a bunch of 5-3 and three is level with us right now to try to get into that top 10. Forward 5 on the road now. Look. Any pluses now? I think still just one. Uh, SAT scores have come out, and there's one player who does not qualify Stoudemire. Not gonna make it. So that's gonna cut that look. List down one further now. I think our minimum SAT score is a 960. So a 950 comes up 10 points short. This is one thing that bothers me. As successful as we've been, the team prestige is still well below the conference prestige. But have we really been that successful? One round of 16 appearance? That's not building a big name for yourself. So I suppose we're right where we belong. RPI at 61. Not dropping much after two losses because it was two good teams. Both games on the road. Uh, we get the win there to open up the week. Next up is one of those road games that is winnable. Toledo, just 7-15. Last time I checked, they only had one conference win. Maybe two. So if there's ever a game on the road, and we go, hey, guys, it might not be our house, but we can come in and take this thing. This would be one of those. Knights. Okay, it's game day. How do we do? How do we do? Come on, come on. I need a road win. I need a road win. Yes, we got it. Okay. 16th win on the season. 7th. In conference. Southern Illinois. Home team. A oh, home game. Even though they're 13 and 8. Uh, we've been doing well at home. You have new mail. Okay, top 30, UCLA, Notre Dame, Duke. Top three guys. Same in the rankings. UCLA with one loss. Top record in the nation. Top ranking in the nation. And I'm I'm better than these teams in terms of record, but because of the conference that I'm in, it sets me back a bit. Recruits real quick. Jarvis, nothing. Nothing happening here. Still just evaluation. Uh, might go for a look though. Uh, watching film, not just with point guards. Kind of getting an update on everyone. Oh, 
One more, one more. Okay. Well, let's get through it. This would be that, that one home game that could go down as a defeat. We've got better than a 50% chance of winning. But it could be tight. We get the win, though. 17-5. Next up, Charlotte. Here's another one. 15-8 and eight team. Some good records in the league this year. So we're finally getting up to a division that's high enough that you're seeing a lot more of that. Got the win, 18 and five now, nine and three in conference. That's gonna really help out. Uh, uh, Loudonville here with this next game with just the 8-15 record. I think they were next to last in the conference last time I checked. That's a winnable road game. Doesn't mean we're going to, but it's certainly winnable. Fits at seven boards a game now. Monroe has dropped off here once we've hit the conference games down to 12 and a half points per game. Luckily we've uh, been fortunate enough to find some support from other players. Spread that scoring around a little bit. So, yeah, let's let's keep things moving here. RPI up to 45. Not ranked or anything. In fact, I don't see any of the teams in the conference ranked right now. We dropped that game by a lot. 19 point loss. Ouch. How did we play that poorly? Got blown away in the first half. Every one of these losses have been, you know, 10 plus point deficits at the half. So the team's not coming out real strong uh, in these road games and then having a hard time overcoming it in the second half. Uh, Hawaii, just 4-20 and 20 now, so they've only managed three wins since we played them last time. And all three as conference games, 3-10. and 10. That was just the fourth win for uh, Loudonville, so that hurt. Uh, luckily, we're still at the top at 9-4, and four, uh, but four-way tie. And we're losing that advantage a bit here with uh, just a few games left, right? Yeah. Hawaii is certainly winnable, but two of the final three are here on the road. Montana's winnable. Uh, but Valparaiso, that's going to be tough. They have dropped to 8 and 5 in conference, but their RPI and my RPI are very similar. <clears throat> Come on, this is a road win we need. We, we're hitting the need point in the season with just three games to play. We need that cushion. Come on, guys. Get it done. Get it done. Okay, 10-4. and 10-4 in conference. Montana. That's a more winnable game as well. Uh, I want to stop simulation real quick because I don't think we've gone into recruiting 
and I know we're getting near uh, a point where we can go visit some players again. Uh, point guards, though. Arden still just one. Charles West and Jarvis. Uh, I do want to take a quick look and see if any of these guys have randomly signed with others just yet. Shadowman's available. West, we're still number nine. Brown, number seven, small forward. Bain, another small forward, ten. O'Hanlon, small forward, ten. Webb, small forward, number four. And that's back to the top of the list. So nobody's signed with anyone else in the meantime. They're all still available. Pushing into that late February. Looks like I'm not going to hit the rankings here at 19 and 6, but we, uh, we certainly aren't far out of the rankings. Montana. Let's get it done, guys. I would say this is a must-win game right here. 70% chance that we win it. 11-4, 20-6 on the season. Win number 20. It's always a good year when you get to 20. 92-79, final score. Next up, and finally, to end the season, Valparaiso, 18-8. So before we get to it, we need to know where do we stand. And <laughs> we're two games clear. Whew, two games clear. We are the regular season conference champion, and there is a five-team logjam at nine and six. Valparaiso among them, and they have got to be the favorite for this final game coming up. Here, RPI not far behind us. So we're playing a similar team. Uh, before we get to that one, I want to actually see the sky report, see how closely we match up. Monroe is the better. Bench is the better. Otherwise, it's a pretty even matchup. It's going to hurt losing Fitz at the end of the season, but Waltman, yeah, he's a, he's a good player. He's been pretty quiet, but he's a good player. So... Uh, but he won't be the hardest to replace. And I, I think we'll have a strong team next season. But we've got an automatic promotion. So we are moving up yet again. Look how high we're getting up there. We're going to be in the 7th conference. Conference G. Next year. So whatever happens the rest of this season. I don't mind. Uh, but also, look at the time. I do not have much time left. I'm not going to do another whole episode just for those postseason games. So with that, I better speed things along. Uh, presumably, we will be in the NCAA tournament with 20 wins. Even if we don't win the conference tournament. So this game against Valparaiso doesn't actually mean anything as exciting as it might be to watch this one, and it could be a tight contest. Uh, I, I think we're going to lose this game. I mean, I, I put our chances somewhere between 35 and 40% on this one. But we don't need it. So it's, it's okay. It's okay. If we get to a conference title game, we'll certainly uh, tune into that one. 12-4? Yep. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait a second. <laughs> we got the win. We just beat Valparaiso. We just wrecked their season. And there you go. Finally, a good first half. A good first half on the road. Both teams level on uh, 28 for points in the paint. Second chance points, fast break points. They never led the whole game. They fought back. They got close in the end. We led the entire game. We finally got a good start. And it was Waltman who I was just 
uh, not necessarily criticizing, but certainly not offering much praise. He just grabbed 21 points. Recruiting, evaluation, uh, no need to jump into anything there. That's the end of the regular season. Uh, I suppose before I get too much further, let's get a final look at the uh, conference standings before we get into the postseason. And there we go, 12-4, and four, uh, Baltimore and Southern Illinois. Uh, second and third with the other automatic. So those three, guaranteed, uh, these guys are going to be fighting for that next best spot. Central Florida, Valparaiso, Charlotte, uh, Western Carolina, you would certainly think Valparaiso uh, would be the favorite with the 18 and 9 and the high RPI, uh, but they're going to have to get deep into the uh, tournament. And losing twice to us hurt their season a lot. They were 9 and 5 without it. That RPI is probably going to go up quite a bit with that road win against a good team. Eight spots, 41 now. So yeah, that's that's a decent climb. But a regular season record of 21 wins. Certainly not our greatest total, but every 21 season has been worthy. Now, let's see. Where are we? I want to see the tournament. Uh, I can't see. We are H. Okay, so we're going to get the winner of Muncie and Montana. And those are pretty winnable games. After that, we got uh, <laughs> Central Florida, Valparaiso, whoever our 12 is. We've reached March, still just evaluation. So let's get back to it. Oops. That's next season. Next season, Conference G. There we go. Yeah, don't crash on me here. It was just saved a day ago, but still, there we go. It's worked. I haven't gotten into the games just yet. Uh, meanwhile, top 25 in the country, still UCLA on top, though. They have dropped two more games at 27-3 now. Duke second. Uh, Notre Dame third, UConn in fourth. My Ducks outside of the top 25 there for the first time in a while. And we're not far from it. Still a little confused why we don't have a 12 seed at the moment. We certainly should have one. You have new mail. Okay, well, there was a team. They played them. Okay, so Muncie got the win. 73-62. Uh, uh, we've already played Muncie and, and beat them quite comfortably. Uh, so it certainly make us favorites in this game. Uh, but we'll see. This rematch with Valparaiso, it is so hard to beat a team three times, especially a good team.
8370, the final in that one. You have new mail. And Valparaiso gets the win against Central Florida. So Southern Illinois, Western Carolina, uh, two lower seeds actually in the other semifinal. So Baltimore got knocked out there by Western Carolina. Uh, Two-point loss, 66-64. This is almost the better game, seeing Valparaiso a third time, and we didn't watch the last one. Uh, they're they're 20-9. 20, 20 uh, let's check the recruiting, see. Just evaluation, okay. Players declaring for draft, no one. Finalists, UCLA. That guy has been the favorite all season long. One more glance here. So Monroe, Fitz, and the bench. We've got the edge. We've certainly got the edge. But I'm out of time. So, sorry. <laughs> as much as uh, you'd like to, possibly. As much as I'd like to. Uh, we don't need it. We don't need... The conference title be nice but we don't need it so ah we sim we sim and we got past them we got past them 73 69 southern illinois beats western carolina I'm trying to think we played them at home so i think we beat them earlier in the season i might check that real quick and see what the score was uh, again, it was the first half. We got it done in the first half. They only had two fast break points, zero second chance points the whole game. Uh, we led most of the way. And Waltman <laughs> stepping up 18 points. He's been big here late in the season. Uh, another double-double from Fitz. Curious how many that is, but we don't have time to check that right now. So we've got Southern Illinois here in the conference title game. We'll check two things real quick. How did we do earlier when we played them? I remembered it was a home game. So yeah, 72 to 60. Their RPI is 113. And the other thing to check, scattered report. Ooh, other than steel, heavy favorites on this one. They were 17 and 12 overall. 10 and 6 in conference. Third seed. You can see they were level with Baltimore. Recruiting should still be the same. Yeah, evaluation. I think it's like next week where we have contact. Again, it's nice. It's a little bit important, but it's not so important that we have to stop for it. And there you go. Conference champion. 78 54. Big win there. So, uh, Regular season title, postseason title, in conference. We dominated it this year. It's the best team I've had in a while. But we still didn't take care of ourselves on the road terribly well. Yes, we're 24-6, and six, and that is certainly a good record. But 17 games at home. 17! Just 7-6 seven on the road. So <clears throat> as, hard, as high as that RPI has climbed, and as well as we've done... I think our record's a little bit embellished by uh, our success at home. And the NCAA tournament, we're not going to be at home. So uh, let's finish the week. And we'll check in our, our recruiting. And again, I don't want this to extend into another episode. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm going to be doing the off-season off-camera uh, this year. We've, we've had a number of seasons in a row with recruiting specials, and uh, I really wanted this to be one of those was where we move straight on to the next season uh, next time out. So uh, I don't want to stretch it into another one. So we're just going to keep right on simming. Uh, into the tournament, through the tournament, and uh, see how far we can get. Evaluation. 
Good sim week. You have new mail. Okay, there's the selection show. Recruiting, nothing changed, right? Yeah. Uh, let's save time, skip show. We'll just see where we're at. You have new, you have new mail. It's cool to watch, but we don't have to see it every time. Auburn Conference D, eighteen and ten. Eighteen and ten, huh? Auburn is not ranked, and it's split. Moore is a favorite. Monroe is not. This is the first time all season I've seen him outmatched uh, by another player. So Miller, also a sophomore, too. Wow. Ooh. Okay. And that's not even their best player. It's Bryant, uh, who is also better than Fitz. And Fitz has often been the better player. And it's been rare to see Steele the better player. Oh, interesting matchup. Interesting. Now this says number 25. That doesn't. Quick glance, I gotta make sure these guys, yeah, they still have contracts left, recruiting, evaluation. Orleans and Baltimore, NIT. RPI jumped to 35, and yes, it says, there you go, new rankings, 25th. So we cracked the rankings. So Baltimore gets a win against New Orleans. Look at all these teams we've got in. So we're finally starting to hit a high enough division where uh, we've got lots of teams getting tournament bids. Not necessarily the NCAA, but tournament bids. Uh, we're a few days away from our game still, so let's kind of push right up towards it. I would imagine we're the higher seed in this game, but not necessarily. Wisconsin beat Oregon State. The Beavers, not the Woodchucks, but sure. Uh, Southern Illinois got their win. Valparaiso out. What a f collapse to their season. Uh, losing to us three times and then going down in the NIT in the first round. Uh, East Tennessee beat Central Florida, so that was, I think Central Florida is our team. They lost. Uh, Army losing to Charlotte, so Charlotte got a win, so a lot of conference wins there. Decent amount, anyway. There's two more teams playing today. Cal Riverside, so West Carolina drops their game. Baltimore wins. Here's some more. North Indy, Southern Illinois. This is more than half the uh, conference. I think that's the first time I've seen that in all of these seasons. I believe this is the first time where we've had better than half the conference. Uh, Wisconsin Green Bay. Okay, so that was our team, uh, our conference team, and they got the win again. Uh, Charlotte's out, though, second round. Southern Illinois is out. And there you go. We are a 6 seed against the 11 seed Auburn. And yes, it is the NCAA tournament, but I'm already 10 minutes over on this episode. So uh, we got the win 96 93. That's tight. Conference D team. We might be the higher seed, but that is a tough game. Uh, points in the paint heavily favored them. Uh, field goal percentage almost 50% each. Three pointers. We shot 60%. That might be where we got the win. Okay, where are we at? South Orange. As in Syracuse. I think so. I think that's supposed to be Syracuse. Or is it... Eh, it wouldn't be Miami. Okay, where? Oh, you haven't given it to me yet. Okay, give me one more day. You 
You have new mail. So three seed and the number eight team in the country. Take a look at the scouting report. This could be the end of our season right here, but what this would be the biggest win we've ever had, I think, at this point. Uh, I know we've had a couple big wins, some top-ranked teams, but I don't think we've beat a top-10 team before. Uh, Monroe, the favorite here. Fitz, again, the lesser player. Uh, Moore is outmatched as well. Our bench is looking good, though. We both have 12-6 and six records. We have very, very similar conference records. Uh, but what? what uh, conference D, which was the same conference uh, Auburn was in. Uh, but these guys are definitely ranked a bit higher. Uh, Buccaneers, that could be a Florida team. But it certainly could be Syracuse. All right, well, we'll see. What happens, happens. Ready, set, and go. <laughs> and we're still alive. We are still alive. We just beat by a massive margin. We just beat the number eight team in the country, 94 to 69. Uh, we got it done in the first and second half. And th there's nothing here that suggests that we did anything shooting it's hard to see a big win here Waltman just 4 of 10 just 11 points but he was a plus 22 sorry my phone keeps going off here uh, nobody double digit rebounds so Fitz only had 7 boards we committed a lot of fouls Monroe had 6 points uh, it's uh, maybe the bench, bench scoring. Hearns, 13. Milton had 12. They're both plus 15. Uh, Lewis was a plus 13. Huh. It must have been. It was the bench. And it's their starters that are big minuses, so our bench against their starters? Wow. All right. Well, we have our second ever Sweet 16. And next up, we have uh, Providence, number 12 seed. Or number 12 in the country, is it? It's number 12 in the country. <laughs> Not a 12 seed. Hey, hey we're, we're 25th. You have new mail. We're not a pushover. But we're not Providence. And we just played that game. I thought it was going to be the next week, but it wasn't. Uh, so we just went down in the Sweet 16. Uh, let's get back and see... Where is it? 81-69. So, out of the tournament, but we got to the Sweet 16 for the second time ever. Uh, senior Ben Waltman, definitely the star down the stretch at the end of the season, but in that final game, it is Chris Monroe, the sophomore, with 18 points. Uh, Waltman actually ended up taking over with 13 points per game uh, as tops for the team. So, down the stretch, the senior really helped us out. Uh, late in the season. But we're going to get a lot of these guys back. Uh, we were 12th in the nation in scoring. Defense did drop a bit to 79th as we played some really, really good teams uh, there down the stretch. But, hey, second time ever to the Sweet 16, so that's that's going to be a nice record haul. Uh, one thing I might have just missed was the one recruiting week. <laughs> it's quiet now hopefully it's next week and i didn't miss that as well in the in the rush uh, i've got one player left to recruit so we'll we'll see how that one goes uh, but i'll be doing that off camera doing the off season off camera and i'll see you at the beginning of next season up one more conference to conference g i'm decathlon gamer and remember i'm aiming for the best of the best so if you're ready to join me on my journey hit subscribe and tune in next time on my road to the record bye for now